to break, otherwise you end up going to see box. Hey guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to another video. And I've been looking forward to making this video for a while. In fact, it's an idea that I've had buzzing around the back of my head for years, but for whatever reason, I've not done it. Laziness, I guess. No, and that idea takes us back to 80s. Now, Group B, I don't really need to say much more, do I? Group B rally car, some of my favorite ever race cars, period, and some of the most popular rally cars of all time. So much so that we still talk about them today with that same sort of excited demeanor that you would have had watching the cars in period. Fire-breathing monsters, I think it's fair to call them. We're talking 500 plus horsepower, four-wheel drive, big turbocharged engines and cars that uh, were a bit lighter than they should have been if you catch my drift. And these were back in the days with different spectator rules as well. So you would see these cars just flying past spectators within an inch or so either side of the road. and. Of course, that's sort of one of the reasons why Group B in the end was disbanded, why it was, uh, why, the, why the regs moved on, because you put all those things together in a big melting pot, eventually something goes wrong, and it did a few times. And on the other side of the motorsport discipline, we had turbocharged F1 cars, 1.5 litre engines, tiny little engines, that were turbocharged to somewhere in the realms of 1200 horsepower, five bar of boost, that is a ridiculous amount of boost for a little engine like that and in qualifying trim the tires that were put on the car would make today's Pirelli tires seem durable they would pretty much disintegrate after the flying lap as would the engine by the way they had specific qualifying engines that were rebuilt just for that one do or die lap now where I'm going with this comes from a quote that I read from piston heads uh, and this quote is all the way back from the early 2000s. And that is that Group B rally cars have performance comparable to Formula 1 cars of the same era. In the 1986 season, Henry Teuvelin lapped the Estoril circuit in a Lancia Delta S4 during the Portuguese rally. His fastest lap would have qualified him in sixth position of the F1 Grand Prix that same season. Now that time he was chasing was set by Ayrton Senna, of course. A 116.673. And the Delta S4 was about 1.6 seconds slower than that. Now, this is one of those motorsport myths that no one really has tried to prove or disprove. I think I kind of know why. I'll get into that a bit later on. But given that I am a simulator slut and I have all these cars at my disposal, I have the circuit, I have every possible Group B car, I have F1 cars to drive until the day I die, I figured it was time to maybe investigate this a little bit with a little bit of my own sim racing myth busters please don't sue me just before we get into this video i want to very quickly mention something that we've all been working on very hard behind the scenes and we would love for you to come try out yes sim racing gp your new home for anything online and competitive in sim racing as someone who's been sim racing for over 10 years this is something that the scene has been sorely lacking. All you need to do to set up an event for your community is select the sim you like, the cars you want to drive, and the track you want to use, and you can be up and running in seconds. If you're a driver, it's as easy as browsing one of the hundreds of communities that already exist on the platform and find an event that suits you. So sign up today at www.simracing.gp and I look forward to seeing you on track. So first things first, here is the rally car we're going to be using today. Representing Group B, it is the mighty Audi S1 E2 Quattro. Now, we do have four-wheel drive. It is quite a basic four-wheel drive, which means that we're going to be understeering quite a lot on power. And I'm going to be relying more on getting this car sideways to get it into a corner quicker than powering out with a sort of four-wheel oversteer power rally drift thing. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I'm going to just hit the throttle. Now, I know what you're thinking. This isn't a Lancia. No, it's not. But this is actually more powerful than the Lancia. Uh, this, in its current trim, runs about 550 brake horsepower from that turbocharged inline five engine, which makes that distinctive quattro growl that we all know and love. It also has some fairly uh, basic aero on it as well with this sort of scoop at the front and this rear aerofoil slash wing at the back. From a personal perspective, this is one of my favorite race cars ever. I just love everything about it. I love that it's a box that has just been dressed up to go rallying. 
and it's just more power than sense. Everything about Route B and the way that the cars went racing, it just appeals to me on some visceral level, and I can't wait, frankly. So we find ourselves then at the Ethereal Circuit in the pit lane with, appropriately, an ambulance just sitting just behind our car. Here it is, just growling away in the, uh, the foreground. And I'm going to give the Audi every possible best chance I can give it here. So we're going to give it maximum turbo boost, which is that full 550 brake horsepower. The uh, softest tyres possible and taking as much fuel out as possible to make this car go as quick as possible. Easy, right? Also, driver mod. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of practice before I actually put in my quick lap around here. And then we're going to see how it compares to an F1 car of the same era. Mad that we can even think about comparing the two. All right, so I've got my very big overkill fireproof gloves on right now because Group B going to Group B. And out onto circuit we go. And uh, I want to show you guys the acceleration of this thing from a standstill. If I can get the turbo working, because sometimes we just we just bog. So we're in first gear. There's 60 mile an hour. That's about 100 right there. In a car from the 80s that goes rallying through forests, darting past trees at stu stupid speeds. It's absolutely mad. So this is Esther Real, by the way. If you don't know it, it's an old, well, an older circuit nowadays if you're an F1 fan anyway. I haven't seen it on a uh, single-seat calendar for a while. And this is the 88 version as well. We're trying to be as truthful as possible to that original myth, to that original claim that a Group B car could be as quick as an F1 car. And straight away as a rally car i'm just drawn blah, blah, i'm just blah, drawn blah, to the grass so down this little straight here and this little kink and that comes on to the second longest straight on the circuit fifth gear really long this gear but we're still hitting nearly 230 k's before breaking down the bottom here maximum brakes oh yeah that's normal <laughs> there's just so much power in this thing and it's all just like it's what i like to call stupid power it's just Smash through four-wheel drive. Well, well, any tall veteran? Don't know what that is. Any sort of bias? Uh, whatever it comes out the factory as. <laughs> you just end up putting this power down in one big lump, one big chomp, and you just go flying forward in whichever direction the car's pointing. Sometimes that isn't the best thing. So nice slow out lap to get used to where we're going. And then we come around the long. This is where I think we're going to lose the most time to the F1 car around this long right hand. A lot of downfall seated here. We're just understeering there. And now down the straight. Already into fifth gear. Now watch that speed climb down the bottom right there. 230 k. It's 240, probably 250 before we're going to break down the walls. T1, 260. I'm seeing on the top there. 270 and break. And I've braked far too late, I think. Oh no, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't have done it better if I tried. Oh, come on, fruit, fruit, fruit. And you're seeing the, the main problem of this car right now is just absolutely terminal understeer. It's not really a way you can drive this car fast without sending it sideways into the corner. You that handbrake bound, but these cars didn't actually have handbrakes back in the day. The cars were set up in such a way that if you did pull the handbrake, you'd stall the car. So it's all about getting the car sideways on entry and trying to get to the inside of the corner so you can just power out like that very different style of driving to driving an f1 car i'll tell you that for sure the big braking zones here gonna be a bit of a trouble for this audi hook in power out that five cylinder in front of us just pulling us out the corners proper speed this imagine driving this in the 80s and if you're in, in elantia with a roll cage made of plastic Knowing that any mistake, any little issue is putting you into a tree and probably taking your life. I can't think of the bravery or stupidity that they're very, very close. It would have taken to drive one of these cars in period. Come across the start finish line. Our time is going to be a 146.7. And that's a little way off the 116 that we saw from Senna in qualifying back in the day. But uh, you know what? Stranger things have happened. It was a okay lap in this. Probably maybe go a second or two faster if I was nailing all the slides in every corner. But still, a way off. So I'm interested to see what our F1 car is going to do. So uh, let's go meet it, shall we? Right then, time for the uh, the big boy, which is uh, 
what I say whenever I go on a date with somebody. I don't really tend to call back after though. Yeah, now given what was said in that article, this car was running on qualifying trim. So we're going to make the best use of this big turbo slapped on the side of this engine. Turn it up to 100%. Luckily we haven't got to deal with the fact that the car will be just shredding itself at that point and go for a proper hot lap in one of the most brutal F1 cars you can drive in a simulator. And in real life, if you're really rich and really insane. Now, in reality, what I did when I started off was just do a little clutch kick to show you how fast it accelerated. If I do that in this car... A bit more power. <laughs> so obviously, not four-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, but I'm pretty sure our rear tyres are bigger uh, than both sets of tyres of the Audi combined massive things here of course we have a uh, full h pattern gearbox as well lots of air i'm just cruising around our outlap full heel toe as well on the downshift and now it's on song and there's 260 270 280 290 300 k's on the brakes can barely keep up with how fast this car accelerates and the downshift on the way down as well it'll be easy in second gear because when the power comes on it's like getting hit in the face with a shovel now I am in centre, I am not. So don't expect this lap to be something you watch back in 10 years time and think, oh man, they drivers were better back in the day. But instead, just think of it as an idiot sim racer having a stab at one of the most ridiculous cars of all time. So around this last corner and start building the boost. There's the boost, fourth gear, watch out. Ah, I understood a bit there, got out of it. It doesn't matter, we can still make up of it just with pure power down the straight then, sixth gear. 300 k's like it's nothing. Down for starting to hold us back a little bit now. Over a bump. And then down for the gears into third. Into T1. Could have gotten the power a lot earlier there. But I just want to make sure I get round. Because this car is an absolute beast. And that's real, isn't it? A circuit that I know oh so well. Second gear. Into there. Softly. Get on the power. You have to wait for the turbo to kick. There it kicks. Kicks you in the back of the neck. Which isn't the most comfy thing in the world. It's so clumsy in the slower speed stuff. That's where the Audi will have the advantage in that slow speed stuff. But after that, we just rock it away. Up close. Quick, can we downshift? Uh, not quick enough. Oh, we're round. We're round. Oh. Hopefully you're seeing this is a bit more of a challenge than the Audi was. Now, although qualifying tyres do wear very quickly, we have tyre wear off, so we're going to give it another go. Oh my god, it's just as soon as you hit the boost, the car just goes into understeer, because there's so much more power being delivered. Those front tyres just can't take it, even this qualifying compound. It's mad. I carry speed free, but I never know how much speed I can carry. You have to just wait for the turbo to spool back up again. I mean, a tiny little engine there, it's like... Trying to blow through a straw to get that turbo spinning. I should be using first gear here, but I know I need it out of the corner. Woo! That's some acceleration. Right, machine gun downshift, go. Oh, man. That's uh, always difficult to do. Trying to build a bit of boost up, waiting for the uh, exit. There's the bump. If you hit a bump. The wheels start spinning and the turbo spools and you go flying, so you've got to be, know exactly where every bump is on the circuit. It's such a different experience from the Audi. Missing Apex is like the plague, but it doesn't matter so much, I think. You, you get an idea of the speed around here. A couple more corners. There you go. A long right hand. You've got to wait for our moment, wait for our moment, wait for our moment. Turbo's already picked it for us. And across the start finish line. I've not put the timer on screen for you guys just yet. You might think I'm cucking you a little bit, but let me tell you why. Don't worry, you'll, you'll find out everything, but there's something I want to say first. So that's both cars around Estoril, and uh, I will talk about the time of the F1 car very, very shortly, so please hang around. But the reason why I'm sort of leaving that for a couple of seconds is just to say this. When I first came across this article, this sort of little bit of myth, this little bit of legend, that a Group B car could be that close to a Formula 1 car, it awakened that kid in me, the kid that was around in the late uh, 90s, early 2000s, who 
didn't have access to the internet, could only hear things about racing from other people. I could maybe read about them in a magazine or something, but that's the way that I consumed information. So when someone says to me that this Group B car could maybe challenge an F1 car, that's that's amazing. That's awesome. I, I need to learn more about this Group B car. In reality, of course, we both know, you and I, um, that what the result of this is going to be. All you got to do is look at the numbers of each car and you'll know that one's going to be a bit quicker than the other one. But just that little moment, it's nice to imagine that these Group B cars, these cars that we all covet and just need to be around or see and smell. I saw one on the back of a lorry the other day and I went fucking insane. That's what I think of these Group B cars. That's where I hold them in my sort of tier list of racing over the course of all these years that I've uh, been doing this. It's nice to give them that respect. But to the important bit now anyway. So final lap times, of course, the Audi Quattro S1 E2 Group B car, 550 brake horsepower, did a time of a 146.759. Now in my hands, I had the center's uh, Lotus 98T, did a lap time of 123.726. Pretty much exactly 23 seconds faster than the Group B car. So that rumor, that myth that uh, Henry Toivonen was only 1.6 seconds slower than Ayrton Senna round Estoril, busted. Big time busted. There is no way, absolutely zero way, unless they were on gravel, which they wouldn't have been. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun to sort of explore this little idea and go into it and... Uh, find out the truth after all these years if you enjoyed this kind of video feel free to tap that like button you can subscribe as well if you want and if you have any of your own little myths you want busting in the uh, comments below then let me know i'm always open to do videos like this because it, it helps me learn more about motorsport and that's always something that i've got time for as always i've got to say a massive thank you to my patreons and channel members people have hit the join button down below it is much appreciated take care have an awesome day i'll see you all next time